Hello and welcome back to Easy Editing with EDIUS. In this lesson we're going to take a look at the four main windows that you're presented with when you start a project in EDIUS and the different ways that you can organize those and uh, arrange those for optimal use in a variety of different types of tasks that you typically find yourself doing in an editing project. Now you may notice that things have changed a little bit since the last time that we were here. I've uh, worked on some projects, uh, added some new presets, and you'll find that uh, each time you start a new project and finish it, or at least close your program, that they will show up the next time you start EDIUS in this recent project window. And once they show up here in the recent project, opening them it becomes a very easy task of just double clicking on any one. Or if you have it selected, you can use the Start button. If you want to start a new project, it's simply double click on a one of the appropriate presets, give your new project a name, and away you go. But let's go ahead and open a project that I've kind of started for our tutorials. How long it takes uh, for a project to open in EDIUS depends a little bit on how much media you have already assigned to the project and the type of media that's there. If you're working with raw HDV footage, for example, the M2T files, they uh, for some reason tend to take a little longer to open. But here we go. Now as you look at this main screen you'll see that we have four basic windows to start out with and there are actually a lot more windows that uh, can be opened. For example, uh, you can open up a audio mixer and a variety of different types of effect windows but for the most part the main screen that you're presented with uh, allows you to work with four main windows. Now in an ideal world of course you'll have two high resolution computer screens to work with uh, to give you a lot of real estate to spread out these various four windows so that uh, working with a project becomes uh, very easy. You can see a lot of the media uh, showing up in your bins a lot better. But uh, we also realize that there are a number of uh, users that will be working with just one monitor and it actually works a little better for these tutorials as we record them to be just using one monitor. So we're going to go ahead and do our tutorials with just one computer monitor and it'll give you an idea of uh, how flexible the program is and how easy it is to work uh, using just minimal equipment. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our four main windows. This first one up here in the left hand corner is called our preview window and it has two basic screens. One's called a play monitor and the second is called a record monitor. Down here we have what's called our timeline window. This is where all of the editing happens down here as we apply our uh, media and uh, work with various effects and transitions. Over here we have what's called the bin window and this is where all of our media is uh, placed ready to be used in our project and you can place audio, video, uh, still shots, all sorts of different types of media and organize them into various uh, folders uh, so that you can easily find and retrieve clips ready to be used. Now down here we have what's called our palette window and uh, it can hold uh, three main palettes and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. Now as you're deciding how you would like to arrange these different monitors uh, on your computer screen, notice that as you grab them by the very top section of the window that you can move them independently of the other three windows and place them anywhere that you would like on the screen. For example, uh, some editors might prefer to have their bin window over here on the left hand side, so you can simply switch them around. You might want to have the effects monitor over here and place your timeline window over here. However, you'll notice very quickly that once the windows do come together that they kind of snap together then as you move them they move together. So again if you're trying to move one independent of the other you have to grab it by the top. Now because I usually work on a two monitor system and my bin window takes up most of the second monitor I kind of like to have my bin window over on the right hand side where I'm more used to 
uh, grabbing my media. Okay, let's take a little closer look at uh, each of the windows. Uh, let's go to our bin window and uh, maybe bring a clip into our play monitor. Now how you do that, um, you can do it several ways actually. You can just drag and drop it over into the play window. And once it's in the play window, you'll notice that you can take a look at that clip by dragging the slider bar across to see if there's anything in that particular clip that is of any value or use. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot here, so let's replace it with another one. Last time we dragged it, notice how you can also just simply double click on the clip and it shows up in your preview window or your play monitor. I kind of like to call it the preview monitor because it is where I can preview my clips and uh, see if uh, it's something that can be included in the program. And once I do, uh, I can set an endpoint and take it out to about where I want to end the clip and set an out point and then bring it down into the timeline window. Now there's a number of different ways you can bring a clip into the timeline window. Um, I simply often just like to drag and drop. Now you probably noticed that all we got as I dragged that down is uh, the video portion of the clip. There doesn't seem to be any audio. Well, uh, what's happened here is we have not yet told Edius that we want audio. We can do that by just clicking in this little area here that has the A and select Stereo Channels 1 and 2. Now that this audio track has been mapped, as we call it, let's drag that clip again and this time we notice that we did get the audio. Now that it's on the timeline, we see the same clip now appearing over in the record monitor. Let's grab another clip here and uh, this time instead of going and placing it in the preview window, notice how we can just drag and drop that clip right down into the timeline itself. And uh, a lot of editors, especially when they're just beginning a project, might prefer to do it that way because in essence you can trim the clip or choose your in and out points very quickly this way just by dragging it onto the timeline. Okay. Now in a later lesson we'll go ahead and spend uh, more time working with our timeline window to be able to get that set up to work uh, very effectively and very efficiently. For now let's go over and take a look at our palette window and uh, discover a few things about it. Right now you'll see that there are three palettes resident uh, inside the palette window. Um, the most uh, commonly used palette is the effects palette. Here's where we have all of our transitions, all of our video effects. Maybe let's just go ahead and drag one of these effects over to one of our clips, a monotone effect, and you'll see that our video has now gone to black and white. Now once you place an effect on a video clip, you can then go to your information palette and you'll notice that the effect that you have placed on your clip shows up in the information palette and you can double click on it and uh, select various options that may be available with that video effect. Uh, the sequence marker is something where you can uh, set little markers on your timeline to help remember where difficult points are that you need to come back to. But the most commonly used palette is the effects palette and the information palette. Now when you open the program, these palettes may not have appeared exactly as they have in the tutorial. Because they have the capability of being broken free from the palette window, um, any one of them may have been separated. You may have actually even had three separate windows when you opened your project. Um, some editors, myself included, like to have the effects palette appear as a separate window from our information and sequence palette. And that way when I drop a video effect on a clip, it immediately shows up uh, in a very accessible way for me to work with in the information palette. Now you may want to take note that the effects palette um, can not only reside as its own separate window or be placed in the palettes 
window, but can also reside in the bin window. And that allows you to easily toggle back and forth between your bin window and your effects. However, most uh, editors do prefer to keep the effects in their own separate window. Now the advantage of being able to rearrange your windows, of course, is um, to allow you to set up different types of editing environments depending on the type of task that you're working on. Let's say that you are uh, just starting your project and you've uh, captured all your video, you've imported your media, you've got all your music tracks in, your narration, and it's time to organize your bin window. You can stretch that bin window right out and um, examine your clips and uh, decide you know just where that clip should go in your folders if you um, need to create new folders just right click on the root menu create a new folder and now you can add uh, clips to your new folder and then once you're finished organizing your media in your bin window you can drag that back so that you have a more effective a workspace for editing. Now if you're working on a laptop and uh, your space is very limited, maybe you even have a very uh, low resolution monitor on your laptop and you just don't have a lot of real estate at all, one trick that you can do is set up your workspace so that you only have one monitor showing up in your preview window. Go to view and choose single mode. Now you only have one monitor and you can make that monitor a lot smaller which gives you more bin space however you'll probably want to uh, use a lot larger timeline windows so let's break these windows apart a little bit so that we can manipulate them a little better drag that timeline window across and now we have a fairly nice timeline window for our workspace, lots of access to our bin, and just the one monitor to work with. And you'll notice up here that uh, there's a little designation that shows you what you're looking at. Are you looking at the record monitor or the play monitor? And you'll see that EDIUS will automatically switch between the two. As you choose a clip from your bin, double click on it, uh, you'll see that it brings it into the play monitor and indicates for you that you have now switched to the play window. Drag it down to your timeline and you'll see that it switches back to the record monitor. Now a good thing to know is that once you have come up with a Windows design, a Windows layout that you like to work with, you can save that layout under View, Layout, Save Current Layout. Give it a name and um, then as you choose another particular layout maybe with the two monitors dual mode and have your effects palette the way that you like it uh, for editing then you can go ahead and save that as a separate layout and you'll find that as you work with the program there may be five or six different layouts that you typically use as you work with different editing tasks that you'll want to save a layout for so that you can easily switch. Okay, I believe that's it for our tutorial on Windows and organizing your workspace.